Hi guys, welcome back to Nairobi Legal. This video is a continuation of our previous videos on succession law in Kenya and specifically you're going to be looking at uh, conditions for creating a valid will in Kenya. Remember a will is not a letter you write in your home. There are certain legal requirements that your will must conform to and should your will not follow the law of succession act of Kenya then it is an invalid document that has no legal effect within the Republic of Kenya. When it comes to freedom to write your own will, it doesn't matter whether you're a woman or you're a man, you have the freedom to write your own will. But one key thing you need to remember is that your will must conform to the Law of Succession Act of Kenya, meaning that if you write anything according to your own wish without following the law, all you have is a document that has no legal effect in Kenya. And based on Section 2 of the Law of Succession Act of Kenya, it clearly provides that the Law of Succession Act has universal application to all cases uh, whether they involve a person who left behind a valid will or a person who never wrote one or a person who died with an invalid will. So this act has universal application to all cases, meaning that should you want to write a will, you must conform to the rules in this act. Anything that you do contrary to this act is a useless will you have uh, in a wardrobe or somewhere under your bed in your house. And so the Law of Succession Acts of Kenya came into um, effect and it commenced in the year 1981, meaning that uh, from the day of commencement of this act, it applies to all cases of succession in Kenya and every will written must conform to the rules set out. Now, there is a question that arises as far as freedom to make a will is concerned and this is what we call testamentary freedom. Now, you might wonder, is testamentary freedom absolute or not? I mean, do you have the absolute uh, freedom to structure your will the way you want or to give away your property or distribute your property the way you wish? Now, we're going to find out uh, shortly. Remember that uh, all wills can be revoked, meaning that you could have written a will that doesn't conform to the rules set out in the Law of Succession Act of Kenya, and that will can be revoked. Number two, you need to remember that uh, the Law of Succession Act of Kenya limits your freedom to divide uh, your property the way you wish. So remember that uh, in principle, when you hear people discuss about issues of succession, in principle, you can decide to allocate your property the way you wish uh, but remember that um, as far as the law of succession act of kenya is concerned what happens is that your dependents out of a justice they have a leeway provided by the law of succession act of kenya uh, to go to court or rather approach the court and ask for the free property to be given to them and so just to read in verbative, as you can see here, in principle, you can decide how to allocate your property. But then what happens are the other dependents you have on you, the people you left behind, out of justice, yeah, they're given a leeway according to the Law of Succession Act of Kenya on how they can approach the court. And the court will be guided according to Section 28 of the Law of Succession Act of Kenya to decide if they, are, they can benefit from the free property you left behind. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is that much as in principle in conversations you have this liberty to dispose of uh, your property uh, the way you wish according to a will you might have written, uh, that has a limitation. Meaning that your dependents and dependents are defined um, under section 29 of the Law of Succession Act of Kenya. It provides what does a dependent mean. These dependents can actually approach the court through the law of succession, which gives them a leeway to go approach the court and ask for that property to be given to them. And the court now will decide on your behalf because you could have made decisions that are not conforming to the rules set out by the Law of Succession Act of Kenya. Remember that uh, in making uh, this uh, decision, the court will look at uh, dependents that are actually not adequately provided for by your will or in case you didn't leave uh, behind a valid will, it is going to consider uh, the situations of dependents that are not provided for. Remember these are people who are depending on you and these are people were your family. 
And so what will happen is that the court has the discretion yeah, to decide how this property is going to be divided because while you were still alive, you didn't make a decision that conformed to the law of succession act of Kenya. And remember that are there are certain circumstances that the court will take into consideration uh, when making this order of distributing your property. So this goes to show that testamentary freedom is not absolute. In principle, you can choose to distribute your property the way you wish, but remember that your family, your children, your dependents, your relatives, remember again when it comes, it comes to issues of succession, your immediate family is given priority. So your family has a leeway to go and approach the court and the court is going to make a decision on your behalf simply because you left out your family members as far as succession was concerned regarding the property you left behind. In addition to the discussion of freedom to make a will, one thing you need to understand is that a female person has uh, the same capacity to make a will uh, just like a male person. And in this case, um, such a female person does not have to be married or unmarried. So the point of emphasis here is that both men and women have the capacity to make a will. People normally assume it is only a man that makes a will and that is not true. This applies to both men and women. And the other point of emphasis is that uh, the law limits your freedom to make a will and distribute property the way you wish. Meaning that if you go ahead to disinherit your dependents and have provided a section that defines who a dependent is in the previous slide, that way the court will have the discretion if approached by your dependents to actually distribute your free property uh, the way it considers uh, fair. The other thing you need to understand is that sections 5, 26, and 29, when read together, will limit your freedom to make a will just the way you please. And the court again under section 27 and 28 of the Law of Succession Act of Kenya will use its own discretion to actually make a court order that is going to divide your free property uh, the way it wishes. Taking you back to our first video on the law of succession in Kenya, we talked about tested and intested succession. And for this particular video, I want us to focus on tested succession. When I talk about tested succession, what I mean here is that a person dies having left behind a valid will. There's a reason why I keep on mentioning the term a valid will, because again, you could have died leaving behind an invalid will that has no legal effect as far as the Law of Succession Act of Kenya is concerned. And so again, just to repeat that, a person dies having left behind a valid will and this will can either be oral, written or privileged. Now each of these terms will be explained to you in due course. So as you've already seen, the disposal of property uh, to the beneficiaries through a valid will. And for a will to be valid in Kenya, it must conform to the formal requirements of a valid will as far as the Law of Succession Act of Kenya is concerned. Meaning that if you just sit down and write a will on a piece of paper without conforming to the formal requirements of the Law of Succession Act of Kenya, what you're writing is a document that has no legal force within the Republic of Kenya. Now, the person who makes a valid will is called a testator. So the testator makes a valid will. And in that will, the testator appoints a person called an executor. Now the executor in a will is the person who manages property and eventually distributes it. So meaning that if person A, the testator makes a will and names person B as the executor, the role of person B is to simply manage that property and distribute it eventually. Person B is not a beneficiary, but they're going to just manage that property and distribute it eventually. So there's a normal confusion between an executor and a beneficiary. The executor simply manages property and eventually distributes it. And remember again that his authority derives from the will. So the authority of the executor is gotten from the will but that authority of the executor 
has to be evidenced by a document which he receives from court and that document is called probate. So this is a process. We know that you've been mentioned in a will as an executor and you're getting authority from that will but this authority has to be evidenced by a document given to you by court uh, called probate. And the reason why you have to be given uh, this uh, document called probate is to actually um, go and find out whether actually this will was um, valid and it was made according to the law of succession act of Kenya. Now, the other thing you need to understand is that through the grant of probate, the court confirms authority that the executor has under the will. This is a process, as you can already see where we started. A testator is going to make a valid will, is going to appoint an executor. The executor is going to get his authority from the will, and the will has to be evidenced by a document called probate that has to be received from the court. And the reason for this is that the court needs to confirm the authority that the executor has under that specific will. Now, one thing you need to understand again is that we may have cases where a will does not uh, name or mention an executor, meaning that someone has made a will, but the executor has not been named. And in this case, uh, what will be granted is letters of administration with will annexed. That is what is given. Letters of administration with will annexed. All these legal terms are going to be clearer to you in the course of uh, this uh, video and more videos to come. The other thing you need to uh, put at the back of your mind is that it is illegal for a person to deal with property of the deceased without authority. You've seen where we started. The executor is going to get his authority from the will and that will has to be confirmed yeah, by the court or rather the court has to confirm the authority of the executor under that will by granting a probate, yeah, that document called probate. And in cases where the executor has not been named in the will, what will be granted is what we refer to as a grant of letters of administration with will annexed. It is illegal for a person to deal with property of the deceased without authority and this authority is given by the court. This takes you back to the term probate that I mentioned earlier. I hope we are still together up to this point in time. The other thing we need to appreciate is that uh, probate is a process yeah, of proving whether a will is valid. This is a process of proving whether a will is valid. Remember the trajectory of where we started? And I'm sure you can now tell uh, that a person must have a valid will and that will uh, is written by a testator and that a testator may mention an executor who is going to actually manage and distribute that property that person is going to get authority uh, from the will and that will has to actually this authority has to be evidenced by a document called probate and through probate um, what we mean here that is that the court is simply uh, trying to prove whether the will is indeed valid This is just to emphasize the previous discussion we've had and one thing you need to understand is that before a will can take effect it must be a valid testamentary disposition meaning that uh, whoever made that will must have done it knowingly with intent and they had the capacity and they chose to write this will and they followed the formal legal requirements of a valid will as far as the law of succession acts of Kenya is concerned. Each of these uh, statements are going to become clearer to you in the course of many more videos to come. And remember, a will is not a document you write in your house. We have legal rules that must be followed. And if you fall short of those legal rules, whatever document you've written in your house or with your friend is an invalid document that has no legal effect within the Republic of Kenya. When it comes to conditions for making a valid will in Kenya, Remember these conditions are provided under the Law of Succession Act of Kenya and each one of them is going to be explained to you in detail so don't worry. But one thing you need to remember if you're watching this content for the first time, consider subscribing, turn on the notification button so that anytime I'm going to be posting a video of the Law of Succession, 
you're going to receive alerts so that you continue watching this content consistently. Now, as far as uh, validity of a will is concerned, you must have the capacity to make a will, meaning that you must be of the legal age, which is 18 years, and you must be free from insane delusions. Now, we're going to be explaining each of these uh, terms in the next uh, videos to come. And the other requirement is that as you make a will, you must have knowledge and approval. You must know what you're involving yourself in, and you must go ahead to approve this will. Meaning that should your intellect suffer, then you will be considered to have lacked the capacity to make a valid will. As far as conditions for making a valid will are concerned, in the next video we're going to break each one of them down and provide a specific section of law that talks about uh, these specific conditions. As we come to the end of this video, like I stated earlier, in the next video we're going to understand the formal requirements of a valid will, meaning that what conditions need to be fulfilled, and these conditions are in line with the Law of Succession Act of Kenya. We're also going to look at oral wills and written wills, and so many other discussions surrounding the Law of Succession in Kenya. If you haven't subscribed again, consider subscribing. Thank you.